34 trillion dollars. That's how much the U.S. debt is. It's difficult for people to understand three elements of life that relate to this subject. One is large numbers. People have difficulty with that. People have difficulty with time. And people have difficulty with exponential growth. Let me just take a moment to explain just what $1 trillion is. If you spent a million dollars a second, it would take you a year to spend a trillion dollars. Just to give you another flavor, the U.S. housing market, every house value total together is $30 trillion. If you laid single dollar bills side by side, it would cover the entire state of Delaware. Okay, so it's a lot of money. Mortgage rates are now down to 6.2% down from 8, and that's good. The interest rates are down also. There's still a problem with the yield curve, and it's a yield curve inversion. What that means is that people don't have confidence in the long term. So what they're doing is buying short-term securities, U.S. securities, at a higher price then long term, and typically long term, you should give them money for. The case show index, which is an index the Fed uses for, for home sales, um, says that right now this is one of the worst, um, one of the worst marks you've had in a long time. Nuclear energy, the nuclear energy stocks are up 80%. Um, that seems to be something that people are looking at in terms of uh, overall solution to the energy problem. Consumer sentiment is up and PMI, which is the Purchases Management Index, what that is, is that is a survey conducted that gives a flavor for what purchasing managers are going to be doing from now, from the future, six months from now, where they're going to be buying uh, more products, where their inventory is at, what they see as far as sales. So that's a good tool to let us know what's coming down the pipe. And that's been down. Anything below 50 is not good, and it's been consistently below 50. The CPI was down somewhat. The core CPI, which excludes food and energy, uh, was, was, was down a little bit over the last period of time. The prime rate, which is the rate banks lend to their best customers, is 8.5. The federal funds rate, which is the banks, the, which, which, which is what um, the banks lend to themselves, is 5.4. Let me go back. The prime rate again is what a commercial bank would lend to a commercial customer. The Fed funds rate is a, is a rate which, which, which the Fed which banks lend to each other to make sure they're solvent and meet the reserve requirements the next day. Uh, $1.1 trillion in credit card debt. Uh, issues in the Red Sea still. There are shipping companies that are no longer, that are questioning whether they want to ship in the Red Sea. There is a announcement of a new weight loss pill by Eli Whitney and Novaris which seems to have an impact um, on the, the market as far as, as pharmaceuticals are, have been um, going. The housing market in America at, is at the highest rate it's been in history. If you use the 30% rule, 30% rule being that typically people put aside 30% of their income for housing. If you use that rule, we're at the highest rate, mortgage rates in history. Charlie Munger uh, has died. Um, the, the, the continuing resolution, the issue in the House in terms of whether or not they want it from the government has finally been solved. Gold prices are up. 14% this year, also bankruptcy, bankruptcies are up so far at, as of last year. Food, rent, insurance is still climbing. 
and uh, debt is is being more and more more accumulated in America. A firm, which is a lending association, uh, their their revenue went up incredibly this year, and there they say the debt is at an all time high. Car loans are up upside down as far as insurance is concerned. There is a issue now with BlackRock, owned by Larry Fink, who, uh, I shouldn't say owned by, well, CEO Larry Fink, runs BlackRock. They're, they made a ton of money. They're also going to be involved in the first Bitcoin ETF. And this is an amazing thing. Keep your eye on BlackRock. They are, to my, my mind, the most powerful country, company in the world. They control about $10 trillion in assets. That's a huge amount of money. The job report was a little bit down, 3.7%. But when you look at the job report and they say new jobs that were created, 20% of those jobs that were created were created in the public sector, government jobs. So I don't know how much you can really count those. Bitcoin, new all-time high, over 44K. Going back to Larry Fink, Jamie Dimon, who is the CEO of Chase, months ago was talking so much about how bad Bitcoin is. And now since Larry Fink, is putting his assets behind a new Bitcoin ETF. Now Jamie, Jamie Dimon of Chase thinks that Bitcoin might have a future. We're gonna be doing a Bitcoin video or a crypto video shortly after this. So even Goldman Sachs, David Solomon, the CEO of Goldman Sachs, who was someone who was saying that Bitcoin was trash, now, again, I believe because of the influence of BlackRock, he's even turned and said something totally different. Listen, I need your help. If you enjoyed the video, please give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe and have yourself a great day. Goodbye.